what's up? We're going to start taking these questions from uh, <clears throat> AMA, Ask Me Anything, uh, on my ride to uh, North Carolina right now. And um, just please excuse the raspy voice. I'm a little bit under the weather, but that ain't going to stop us. So first question we have is coming from Instagram from Jimmy Bell. 9095 my man big jimmy bell down in columbus uh the question is what was the thing that took you from your old mind focus to your current mind focus that made you a millionaire by 26 so what was the thing or the thought that took you from your old mind focus to your current mind focus that made you a millionaire in 26 um I think it's more just, um, you know, I got, I got blessed with having the right mentors and people to admire and look up. So my old mind focus, you know, people that grew up with me um, or played sports with me could vouch for this, that I always was, as a young person, focused on getting money, uh, just not always in the right way. And um, in sports, you know, always would find a way on the field and find a way to make plays, even if I was smaller than everybody else, just being relentless and outworking people. That ain't bragging, I'm just, you know, anybody that knows me knows those are two things that probably stand out. And, but I didn't always do the, you know, my mindset was not always on you know, if I wanted to be successful, or if I wanted to obtain a goal, it was almost by any means necessary, uh, legal or not legal. So what changed in, in, in business in my early 20s was getting around mentors that I didn't know you could even attain a life of having that much financial uh, success and do it quickly uh, in your early 20s without doing anything illegal. And the people that I was following uh, were of high moral, ethical uh, character and values. And so the mindset that changed was that I was going to do it, but I was going to do it the right way. Uh, I was going to do it legal. I was going to do it legit. And I think the thing that, that was probably the biggest piece of that, Jimmy, uh, was my circle. That I had to get a new circle. You know, I had to stop hanging around people that were hustling and, you know, robbing and, and beefing with people and all of that type of stuff. And I started hanging around business-minded people on the same mission uh, as me. Because no matter how strong of a character you are, eventually if you keep hanging around people and they're all doing one thing, you're gonna end up getting caught in that same environment. So. Uh, I think it was, you know, getting a, a, a different circle of friends that were all on the same mission uh, that I was on and making sure that I was doing everything, you know, ethically, legally, the right way. Uh, but the mindset was always the same. The mindset is find a way to get the job done regardless with no excuses. And if, if you're smaller in business or whatever it is, you just outwork those things. Just outwork everybody and find a way to get the job done by any means necessary all of that was the same besides i had to make sure that it was by any means necessary as long as it's legal and ethical and then after that it was take the gloves off like we're gonna find a way to get it done regardless and be a competitor and be competitive and whoever's number one you got to go beat whoever's number one so uh that was that was the mindset this question was from uh joseph webster on uh, Instagram, the question was, um, how do you not get distracted? You know, in life there's all these distractions. How do you stay focused on your goals when these distractions pop up? Um, the, the question is, how committed can you stay to your commitment? Um, and literally, uh, the more committed, the more successful you're gonna be. The more successful you want to be, the more committed you need to be. And the commitment means you delete all distractions. I mean, there's a point in your life where you you, you just, to take it to the next level, you got to delete all distractions. 
excuse me, the sun's all up in my grill. Um, you gotta delete all distractions, which means take a, take a, uh, a look at all the things in your life that happen and look at how many of them are unnecessary. What are the unnecessary things that you're doing or that, that you're wasting your time on that are distractions and just delete them. Uh, if it's people, <clears throat> if it's things, whatever it is, uh, you have to delete anything not necessary for your trip. So it's like if you're taking a long trip, uh, you know, right now I'm on a trip. I have a suitcase. I took only the things that are necessary for me to make it through this trip in this suitcase. So I don't have my dogs with me. I don't have my television set with me. I don't have everything with me that I would want to take. I only took the things that are necessary for me to survive and make it and do what I need to do on this trip. And so you have to go on a trip to get to where you need to be. And, and once you get there, you can start to make some adjustments. But that first part of getting to where you need to be is, is very difficult, it's tough. And so you can't take all unnecessary shit can't be going with you. You only take the stuff that, that you need to take. And then every day, motivating yourself, uh, reminding yourself of why you're doing what you're doing. And so, you know, if, if I'm being distracted by something and I'm, and, I, and I'm doing it for my children or I'm doing this for other people's families, I take it so serious that a distraction is me letting down these people's families that are depending on me. The, the, the distraction is letting down my children, uh, my daughter, my son, uh, my, 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 my daughters, uh, if I allow myself to be distracted. So it becomes so personal to me that it almost angers me and gets me pissed off if anybody or anything throws me off that distraction because you want to get somebody upset that's a parent, talk about their kids or do something to their children. And so mentally, I just think this is from my mother, this is from my wife, this is from my children. Anything in my way, uh, I'm, I'm ready to kill something. You know, I, I, I've made a vow to myself that I would not get aggressive and make decisions that I would once make maybe 20 years ago unless it came to my family. That's where it's almost like I'm willing, I'm willing to, I'll give my life up for them. And so in business, I, I have that same mentality, killer instinct, that I'm only, if anything that's a distraction is hurting my family and hurting the people that are depending on me to lead their family into a better direction. And so it's so personal to me that I don't have any, any time for it or any remorse for it, cutting those things off. So daily reminding yourself of how serious it is and why you're doing the things that you're doing, reminding yourself every single day. And, and, and then it's, it's in the action every single day. You'll never change your, your life unless you change something in your daily routine. And you have to stay disciplined to your uh, daily routine to go to where it is that you want to be. And, uh, you know, just reminding yourself of why you're doing it should, should, uh, should help you. So let's get it. Thanks for the question. Next question is from uh, Simpler Steam uh, on Instagram. How did you balance uh, reinvesting into your business uh, and, and your spending when you first started? So I just uh, saw this, this picture uh, on Instagram that reminded me uh, of the story already of Elon Musk. And so Elon Musk uh, developed three, and I'm looking for it right now because I just took the picture this morning. Here's the picture right here. Just took this picture. It's hard to see, but I took it this, uh, this morning. It, was, it says my proceeds from PayPal were 180 million. I put 100 million in SpaceX, 70 million in Tesla, and 10 million in Solar City. I had to borrow money for rent. And so 
everybody wants to be a billionaire, but nobody wants to reinvest everything that they have in, into their business. Um, you know, if my mom ever watches this, she'll vow for me. Um, after my first couple years of this business, I had over a hundred grand saved up. And when I moved to Pittsburgh, um, my mom was watching the finances and she would watch them go down. I went from a hundred to like 10,000 in my first couple months moving uh, to Pittsburgh, opening up my office, reinvesting everything into the business. And I was just calm and laughing and she was like crying. And because uh, our family never seen anything, any type of money like that in our life. So to see a hundred grand go to 10 is like earth shattering. And uh, it wasn't a risk to me because I knew that it was gonna all come back out of the business. And so uh, I would reinvest as much as you possibly can into the business uh, until you get to a certain point. Um, so even, you know, four years into the business, five years into the business, I was already making, you know, over 600,000, a million dollars. I lived in a three bedroom apartment for 1200 bucks uh, a month with a one car garage, decent area. But I watch people now in my business have more expensive places and homes building their business than I did five years into the business and I was dominating the business, crushing the business. And so me and my wife, Natalie, um, who was not my wife at the time, we lived there with two dogs, one of them being a bull master right after and a lot of clothes. And we crammed ourselves in that place for years to stack up money to keep putting everything in, into the business. So my answer is, you should be able to find a dollar amount um, that you should get out of whatever it is that you put in and you scientifically, uh, scientifically you figure that out mathematically. So even in, in the streets, you know, somebody, if they buy something, you know, and then they sell it, they know what the profit's gonna be. You know what that number is. So I know if I put it into recruiting and I figure out the math, I know how much money that that's gonna kick me back. I just may have to wait six months. And I think people don't like reinvesting into their business enough to take them to the next level because they don't have patience. Everybody wants things now. And it may take you a year to get the money back. It may take you six months to get the money back. It may take you three months to get the money back. But you never get to the ultimate level if you don't flip your money. If you just hold on to it, you'll just keep making, you know, if I, if I make a uh, hundred bucks off every thousand, you know, I'll make a hundred bucks and then I'll make a hundred bucks, I'll make a hundred bucks, I'll make a hundred bucks if I keep using that same thousand. But if I take a thousand and I start flipping it and buying 2,000 worth, 3,000 worth, 4,000 worth, don't spend any money, all of a sudden I could start flipping it and making more and more and more and more money, but I don't get to spend a lot of that money right now because I got to keep putting it right back into that product or right back into whatever it is that I'm trying to do. And then one day you look and it's like, holy cow, look at all the value that I've built up. Then you can start to pull some out for yourself. So I met a billionaire and I interviewed him and was talking to him and uh, you know, he's 60 some years old and uh, he said for the first 20 years, he only paid himself $180,000 salary and he was making tons of money, but he kept having to put it all into business, all into business, everything in the business. Now it's worth uh, almost a billion dollars. And he said, just in my fifties, I started pulling more money out for myself, but I was living off of $180,000 a year when he could have been living a whole lot flyer. So uh, I, I just want to encourage you guys out there that if, if you're in an entrepreneurial business, I would try to keep my life and living expenses as low as I can so I can reinvest into my business as much as I possibly can. There's typically a formula that you can figure out if I put X amount into leads, I'll get this much back. If I put X amount into recruiting, I'll get this much back. If I put this much, uh, X amount into whatever it is, whatever my business is, I'll get this much back. That return uh, is typically bigger than what people want in the stock market. So, you know, people will gamble all day. If you could give people a 10% return on their money, people would invest with you all day long. People, that, that's a great return. Uh, typically in your own business, 
you're going to get 50% return, 60% return. You can get huge returns, 30% returns, uh, but people don't do it because they don't want to put the money in into it to get the return. They just want the return without putting the money in. You don't get the money back unless you put the money in and people would invest $100,000 uh, to make $10,000, 10% in the stock market betting on somebody else, no problem. But they wouldn't put $100,000 into themselves, into their own business, betting on them, uh, which doesn't make any sense to me. Which is all, you know, if you're in the right business, it's always going to kick you more than the stock market will, uh, usually, you know, and the risk is not on somebody else, the risk is on me. I want to bet on myself. And so that that's my that's my answer uh, is I would try to just keep my expenses as low as I can, you know, roommate with people if you can. You know, when I first started, I would room with people to keep my expenses low. I had anywhere from one to three roommates. When I met Natalie, you know, she was sleeping over. I had three, four different roommates, you know, in a, in a three, four bedroom place that we were already. Uh, and I had money. We were making, a, I was making a couple hundred thousand dollars at that point, but I was saving it all so I could just keep throwing it back into the business, throwing it back into the product, throwing it back into the business until it came a point and then it looked like, oh, Simon must have made it. You know, no, I've been made. I made it a long time ago. You just seeing the, me make it now because I bought a sweet ass car and I bought a Bentley and bought a Maserati in a new house. But that I made that five years ago. I just been flipping it, putting it all back into the business, acting like I didn't make it. That's Hustler 101, babe. That's You learn that in the streets 101. Like you act like you don't make it and keep stacking your dough and reinvesting it into the business until it's all ready to be, you know, clean and legit. And so this, this is people without a high school education understand this stuff. They understand business better than people with, with master's degrees. That's why sometimes the stuff they teach you in school, they come out and I have a business degree, but sometimes you come out from school with a master's degree in business and you don't know shit about business. And there's people that don't have a high school diploma that can teach you a ton about business and that understand this exact concept that I'm telling you that I learned young and that you have to reinvest into your business if you're gonna end up making money. So that would be my answer. Great question, huge question uh, for business. Everybody wants to make that big money. Nobody wants to invest into the business and uh, that's what it takes to make big money. Last one from Instagram, uh, it's from Jordan Lacey in Jacksonville, uh, another superstar. What have you found is the best way to teach young upcoming men and women how to adapt and change from an employee to an entrepreneur, business owner mindset? Uh, first thing is being a teacher. So you said teach, teach. I, don't, I think people don't teach. Teach it. Show them the differences. Explain to them the differences of being an entrepreneur and being an employee and the benefits of being an entrepreneur and the benefits of being an employee. The sacrifices that need to be made short term to be a business owner than the sacrifices if you're an employee that end up happening. And so, you know, what I found out is that the more you seek security, the less of it you find, and the more you seek opportunity, uh, the more security you end up finding. And so I just give examples uh, of people. Uh, so I'm always trying to be a student myself so I can teach. So I find YouTube clips and uh, podcasts and books that they can read and that I can show them of other people explaining it, not me. Because sometimes a prophet, without, uh, a prophet is without honor in his own home so people don't appreciate you as much if they see you every day but they'll appreciate listening to it from somebody else and then i'll pinpoint um, other stories of other entrepreneurs not only that i find but if you find any successful entrepreneur that they know if they were to talk to three to five successful entrepreneurs and ask them the following questions how many hours did you work in your first couple years to get your business rocking how much money did you invest? Uh, what were the obstacles? Uh, how long before you broke even on the investment or how long before you started making money after it was everything you put in, into that business? When you ask those, did you work any weekends? When you ask those questions to successful, not just an entrepreneur, not an entre entrepreneur, 
an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. So somebody that has made it and rocked it. When you ask them these questions and you get the answers, it helps keep things in perspective. It's almost like you think you're working hard until you ask a professional athlete how many times a day they train or what they do. So it's who are you comparing yourself to? So if I wanted to be a professional athlete, I need to compare myself to professional athletes. Sometimes people try to, they want to be professional business athletes, but they compare themselves to rookies or they compare themselves to people that don't even play a sport. So they compare themselves to employees in the schedule and all that stuff, but they're trying to be a professional business athlete instead of talking to business athletes or successful entrepreneurs, they cloud their mind with people that ain't even playing the game. And so ask those entrepreneurs because out of those five people, I bet you five out of five, if not four out of five, are gonna tell you they worked a ton of hours, they put a ton of money into it, it took them longer than a year to even make money, and that they worked weekends all the time, if not now. And so out of 100 people, 98 are gonna tell you that. And so when I start explaining that, teaching that, and having them have those conversations with people, you know, then it makes it more real. So that's that's the way that I teach it, and I uh, always vision casting them uh, with them on, on what they're uh, gonna have to give up to get to where they wanna be, and then just proactively letting them know what it's gonna be. You know, if somebody's gonna play football, I'm gonna go over with them early. You're gonna get bumps, you're gonna get bruises. If you play on turf, you're gonna get turf burn. You're gonna have to get up early in the morning and run. There's gonna be times where you strain your muscle. You're gonna have, like, we already know what the game is. You can't hate the game, you know? So, so don't play the game if you don't like the rules of the game. But it ain't your fault, Lacey, it ain't my fault, it ain't nobody's fault. The game is what the game is. So if you don't like football, don't play. If you don't like being an entrepreneur, you don't wanna make big money, uh, don't play the game. Because the rules are what the rules are, and if you don't pay attention to the rules, you don't make it. And if you look at the country's top 1%, they ain't born off of employees, mostly. The, the, the fraction of a percentage, the top 1%, the top 3%, they ain't employees mostly. Most of them are entrepreneurs. So uh, that's what I got for you. Let's get it.